one. Hi there, it's Meet the Leaders time, and I'm David Smith, and with me is Representative Joe Gresco of the 121st District in Stratford, and it is great to see you. Welcome, Joe. How are you? Always a pleasure, David. It, Doing well. It, it is ours, and it's nice to be able to catch up with you a little bit between electioneering and the start of the new session. We've got a clean slate out there, Joe. Everything's wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Everyone's posturing. Everyone is getting their stuff together, uh, what they're going to work on for the next session. Making a list and checking it twice. Yes. Um, as, as we face up to this, first of all, congratulations on your re-election. Uh, the new session with a new governor and lieutenant governor and a bunch of new faces as well. Uh, some of the, uh, the regulars have either left for one reason or another or got voted out. In, in several instances. How do you see things going forward, uh, this new session? I think it's going to be a, a challenge. Uh, it's always nice to, to start fresh with a new governor, new lieutenant governor, new people, yeah. um, uh, new ideas. Uh, but going forward, um, it's going to be a challenge. We have a, a budget to budget hole to fix. And it's going to be challenging to, to make that happen uh, reasonably. It, it is a huge budget hole. Uh, the governor has suggested that uh, he doesn't want to do rainy day funds, which some of your other colleagues have suggested might be a band-aid, if you will, on uh, this go-around. What are your thoughts? Where do we come up with this kind of money? I don't have a problem using some of the rainy day fund, but uh, if you're going to tell me in two years we're going to be projecting another multi-billion dollar deficit, then I would rather not use the rainy day fund. If this is a, you know, this is the top of the hump and then it's going to get a little bit easier every year going out, then maybe we use a little bit of the rainy day fund in lieu of uh, trying to generate any more uh, revenue. But is there any reason to believe that that's the case? Well, it, it depends where on where we are. It depends on what we do. One of the uh, items that uh, I like to investigate is potentially using any lottery funds generated to uh, offset our pension liabilities. Uh, that, would, that would be a dedicated funding source for that and, and eventually f it would flatten out the line so that in two years or we don't have a spike, it'll flatten things out and similar to the way right. we did with the, with the teachers' pensions. So um, if we can stabilize and then just or, you know, have time work for us as opposed to against us, I'd be looking into that. Well, uh, pe people have suggested that. Uh, they're, they're, uh you know, the, the casinos seemed to be an answer uh, 10 or 15 years ago to lots of the state's financial woes, and yet they've been going down in revenues. The challenge is on from Rhode Island and Massachusetts and every place. What about casinos? Is there room for another one, and is it going to work? I believe so. Um, it, the model, the design for, uh, for a casino, for a gaming uh, facility, is very different from what it was back in the 90s when we entertained it in Bridgeport anyway. And as uh, things have evolved in the states around us and the, and, uh, the tribe's uh, money uh, being generated is, is dropping, I think there's a situation now uh, ripe for, for a compromise on opening something in Bridgeport and then you know uh, relieving some of the responsibility for the tribes, what they have to the state, or giving them a piece of the action, as they say. Yeah, so we're talking MGM. Uh, well, you can't just uh, <clears throat> earmark one uh, uh, gaming entity over another. It would be an open process. Open process. Yes. How, sure. how long an open process would it be, and how long before anybody would see any results of that? I would prefer if, uh, if um, a deal was made kind of, uh, you know, uh, with whoever that open process winner is with, with the tribe so that we don't have to wait for 18 months, two years to get the ball rolling. Uh, the sooner, the better for, for me. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm hearing that uh, uh, there's, there's, there's some talks going on. Is, is there enough free cash out there still? I mean, people, uh, people have been, the, you know, the revenues from the, the casinos have been going down steadily in the state of Connecticut for the last five, six, eight years. 
What's, what's going to bring them up? The ability of New Yorkers to come? Or? Yes, that's uh, apparently that's um, the numbers the, that uh, I've seen uh, from Aqueduct and um, also Yonkers, where they don't even have table games, uh, is very good. So they're hoping that, uh, and this is MGM owning both of those other ones, and MGM right. owning Springfield. And potentially, if they are the winning bidder in, in Bridgeport, owning that as well. And, you know, if... if if they don't know their, what their uh, market is and what their numbers are, and they're saying that it can work, then how am I to say otherwise? Yeah. Uh, other areas of, of, of concern, uh, energy and, uh, and uh, the monies that, that come in there, deep uh, uh, does energy and other things together, uh, and environment, it seems like a strange combination, but it works uh, somehow. Last year, there were there was some funding that was coming in or should have come in, and it got shifted. And it was it was we could do better. It, we could do better. It was we were the last state uh, not to have a budget. It was October of last year, and uh, we saw this pot of money. Uh, it was earmarked for energy efficiency uh, programs energy efficiency improvements. We all pay it. It's on our electric bill. Uh, it's on our utility bill. And uh, the, the General Assembly uh, said, uh, no, thank you. We're going to take that and balance our budget with it, much to the uh, opposition of myself and, and several other colleagues. Uh, but you, we, we were given the idea, well, it's October and we don't have a budget. We, you know, we're, this is killing us. Got to do something. So we kind of uh, um, bit the bullet uh, with the idea that we would fix it later, and then subsequently the the uh, energy efficiency companies were defeated in in superior court. They're now uh, in federal court. They're now taking it to the next level uh, federally. But I'm hoping that uh, this session we can try to uh, at least give some of those funds back. So that I mean, they, for every one of those dollars spent, it saves six dollars. It's a real good bang for the buck yeah. for the money spent and savings. Sounds like we need another lockbox. I'm all for lockbox. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Joe, it, it is great to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks, David. Uh, enjoy the momentary uh, lull before the real world intrudes uh, shortly in, into uh, 2019. Always we'll good do. to see you. We'll and we'll look forward to seeing you up in Hartford. Thanks, David. Pleasure. Representative Joe Gresco of Stratford, our guest on this edition of Meet the Leaders, uh, never ends, even with these momentary breaks. For Meet the Leaders, I'm David Smith.